Good morning. morning. We're glad you're here to worship with us today. Happy New Year to you all. This is a year when most of us would probably say a fresh start will be a good thing. Um, I'm glad you're tuning in online or in the sanctuary to worship with us today. I'm going to trust that you can, you who are here can read through the bulletin and find out what is happening and join in or participate as you are able. I'll only mention that this is the last week for poinsettias, so if you want yours, take them home. I'm not sure how long they will last after this morning. Um, and if you aren't here and you want yours, make sure you call so that we keep it for you. If you didn't get a communion thing, make sure you do or raise your hand so somebody can get those uh, communion goblet to you. Um, Epiphany is on the 6th, which is the 12th day of Christmas, but this Sunday is the Sunday that we observe it this year. Epiphany means manifestation or appearance, and it refers to the divine Christ being revealed or appearing to all the peoples of the whole world, which is why... It is the Gentile wise men coming from afar that represent the significance of this day. From birth, the mission ultimately was for the world, not just for one people or nation. He's for all of us. Today we're with Jim Jim Cleveland back in the tech booth, Kathy Novak filling in for Donna again, who's still under the weather. Uh, Sherry Rice is our lay reader today. Our ushers are Mary Jo and Jim Malott. And all of you who have come and tuned in, we thank you for doing that as well. I really appreciate your presence in whatever way you manage to worship with us. Remember, if you have prayer slips, to hand them to the ushers uh, as they collect the offering directly to them. Our money verse for today honors Epiphany and the turn of the year, even though in the Bible the New Year's Day is in the fall and the Christian New Year is in the beginning of December, end of November. It's still appropriate to see what they they do for New Year's. And this is what the verses say for that and for Epiphany. Observe a day of complete rest. It will be an official day for holy assembly, a day commemorated with loud blasts of the trumpet. You must do no ordinary work on that day. Instead, you are to present special gifts to the Lord. And when the wise men came into the house, they saw the young child, Jesus, and fell down, and worshiped him, and when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him. Let's collect the offering. God of this day and all days, we can only imagine the darkness of the world into which you sent your son, Jesus. But that is why he came, to bring light into the darkness. As we bring ourselves and our offerings today, may we and our gifts be used to share Christ's light with others. For you are an ever-calling God who gathers his people and graces us with your faithful presence. Enlighten us with your vision of gathering and uniting your people to worship and bring joy and justice to the world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. 
Amen. Remain standing, please, for our first hymn. The wise men's visit will not be our primary emphasis this year, but we should at least musically acknowledge the critical importance of their arrival to give gifts and worship the Christ. Join the pastor on the yellow font as we call ourselves to worship today. Sing aloud with gladness. God is gathering the people. We come from the farthest parts of the earth. All who struggle, all who labor with new life. Those who are weeping, God will console. Those who get lost find a clear path home. Let us worship the God who gathers us. As the year turns, it is appropriate time for us to resolve to follow the one who leads us. John Wesley developed a covenant renewal service that was used during a turn of the year watch night service. We're going to responsibly read snippets of it. I encourage you to Google it and read it in full with its full force and meditate on its words. To be able to live the commitment it calls for, we'll need to offer ourselves to Jesus as did the wise men. And to do that, we are going to need the eternal God's constant and faithful help throughout the year. Help that he has always been more than willing to give us. So let's prepare for the covenant renewal reading by singing, O God, our help in ages past.
Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Christian life is redeemed from sin and consecrated to God. We have been admitted into a new covenant of which Jesus Christ is the mediator. He sealed it with his own blood that it might last forever. On the one side, God promises to give us new life in Christ, the source and perfecter of our faith. On the other side, we are pledged to live no more for ourselves, but only for Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us. So let us make this covenant of God our own. Commit yourself to Christ as his servants. We will give ourselves to him that we may belong to him. Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy and honorable. Others are more difficult and disgraceful. Some are suitable to our inclinations and interests. Others are contrary to both. In some we may please Christ and please ourselves, but then there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Therefore, consider what it means to be a disciple, a follower of Christ. Lord, make us what you will. We put ourselves fully into your hands. Put us to doing. Put us to suffering. Let us be employed for you or laid aside for you. Let us be full. Let us be empty. Let us have all things. Let us have nothing. Freely and with willing hearts, we give it all to your pleasure and disposal. God has offered to be our God through Christ, who is the source of all salvation to those who trust and obey. His people must consent fully to all that he requires. Christ will be all in all, or he will be nothing. Rely on God's promise of giving grace and strength so that you can keep your promises. Resolve to be faithful. You have given your hearts to the Lord. You have dedicated yourself to God. With God's power, never go back. Lord, we wholeheartedly turn to you. We renounce all temptations that lead us away from you. We covenant that no known sin shall be allowed in our lives. As your people, we give ourselves body, mind, and soul, to serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. Accept Christ as the new and living way. Covenant with him that whatever may happen in life or in death, that by his grace he will still be your Lord, your wisdom and guide, your will and your law. All his laws are holy, just, and good, and are given for your benefit as the rule for your lives. We take them as the rule for our words, thoughts, and actions, promising that we will strive to order our lives according to his direction and not allow ourselves to neglect anything that we know to be our duty. We are no longer our own, we are his, and he is ours. So be it. May the covenant we make on earth be ratified in heaven. Amen. Amen. Whatever comes, we stand and praise him with all we are. Because he is our strength and song, we receive his salvation and its power, and with it become the message of love in Christ. So let's sing, stand up and bless, I guess we have to stand for this song. Stand up and bless the Lord. Uh, it's to a familiar tune, a charge to keep I have. Stand up and bless the Lord, ye people of his choice. Stand up and bless the Lord your God with heart and soul and voice. God is our strength and song and his salvation ours. Then be his love in Christ proclaimed with all our ransomed powers. Stand up and bless the Lord, the Lord your God adore. Stand up and bless his glorious name henceforth forevermore. Thank you, you may be 
seated. I think I will too for a second. Today's story is a true one from the 16th century in Rome. A priest named Philip Neri, I'm going to guess, N-E-R-I. He was beloved by all classes of people who came for his insight into the hearts of people. The young lady went to the priest for confession. She was not a bad-hearted girl, but she often talked of her neighbors and spoke little tales about them. These tales were repeated to others, causing much harm and nothing good. So Neri said to her, My daughter, you do wrong to speak ill of others, and I order you to perform penance. You must buy a fowl in the market, then walk out of town, and as you go along the road, pull the feathers from the bird and scatter them. Do not stop until you have plucked every feather, and when you have done this, come back and tell me. She thought this was a peculiar punishment. Nevertheless, she did as she had been told and then returned to the priest, who then said, You have carried out the first part of the penance. Now there is a second part. You must now go back where you came and pick up all of the feathers. She protested, But Father, this cannot be done. By this time the wind has blown them all kinds of different ways. I could pick up some. I could not possibly gather up them all. And the priest replied, This is quite true. And is it not so with the unwise words that you let fall? Have you not often dropped idle tales from your lips? And have they not gone this way and that, carried from mouth to mouth until they are quite beyond you? Could you possibly follow them and recall them if you wanted to do so? No, she admitted. Then, concluded the priest, when you are inclined to say unkind things about your neighbor, close your lips. Do not scatter these light and evil feathers by the wayside. The theme for the day is the power of words. E.R. Miller puts it plainly and simply in this little poem. Keep watch on your words, my darling, for words are wonderful things. They are sweet like the bee's fresh honey. Like the bees, they have terrible stings. They can bless like the warm, glad, glad sunshine and brighten a lonely life. They can cut in the strife of anger like an open, two-edged knife. Our story gave a negative example of the, on the power of words misused. Beware social media users. Just because the electronic device you're writing to isn't human and doesn't have feelings doesn't mean it's not reaching humans with feelings at the other end. I think sometimes people forget about that. The poem warns us that words are not only powerful when used negatively and carelessly, but also they can be a powerful force for good as well. Later, we'll hear about God's word, Jesus, who powerfully and positively communicates to us who God is and what he wants and expects in ways that couldn't be done in any other way. In the story of the prophet Jeremiah, we heard a third way words have powerful impact, and that is when the powerfully positive words are ignored. All God's words and rituals and traditions and commands, all his promises and hopes and expectations for his chosen people, for the day of Jeremiah, they had become empty and hollow and neglected in the ears of his people. It led to a dark period in history, enemies without the nation and conflict within. The people lost their identity. They forgot who they were, or better, whose they were. Or at least they forgot to take those words and that identity seriously. Jeremiah spends most of his book warning them about what would happen if they continued this trend and failed to repent and return to God. The words were becoming stale. People tired quickly of hearing them, and Jeremiah probably got tired of telling them to a people who had no intention of taking those words seriously. The people ended up throwing Jeremiah in jail for his words. And then God's people were hauled off into exile as defeated prisoners and refugees. They all needed a respite from this barren life. They needed to hear some powerful, positive words to help them make it through the day, an oasis of hope in a wilderness of circumstances. And God gives them to Jeremiah, these words to Jeremiah, words of hope the people are to repeat and let fly like feathers in the wind. 
Not negative words, but words to live for, words to make it through the next day. Jeremiah calls the people to a future hope in God's restoration of the people and the land. God says he would give them gladness for sorrow. Biblical gladness isn't just grinning and bearing it and getting through the day, but it's about abounding joy. It's most often linked with weddings, and there's no better party than a wedding party for the day, people in the days of the Bible. Listen to some of the other words of God through Jeremiah. Sherry will lead us in the white font. Join me in the yellow in this adapted reading inspired from just a small part of Jeremiah's prophecy of promise. The Lord says, make it known, give praise and say, the Lord has saved his people. In answer to their prayers, I will gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. With great care, I will lead them home and they will come. Tears of joy will stream down their faces. They will walk without stumbling on level paths beside quiet streams of living waters. Listen to this message from the Lord and publish it abroad. The Lord will gather his people. He will watch over them like a shepherd does his flock. He will pay the price to save and free his people from what overpowers them. They will sing songs of joy on the hills of home and shine with joy over God's goodness to them. Their lives will be like a well-watered garden, for I will comfort them and turn their mourning into joy, for their captivity with all its sorrows will be behind them. He will satisfy our souls and fill us with his goodness. So let's pray. Creative God, you make all things new in heaven and on earth. Like the people of Jeremiah's day, some of us come to you in a new year, desperate to hear words of hope. We need old fears to be replaced with new desires, old consequences met with new decisions, old weaknesses overcome by new dreams. Because you are a God of hope, we know that you create all the possibilities of the future. Because you are a God of love, we know that you forgive all the mistakes of the past. Because you are a God of our faith, we come into your presence with gladness. For you have been gracious to us through all the years of our lives. We thank you for your loving care, which has filled our days and brought us to this time and place. You have given us life and set us in a world filled with your glory. You comfort us with family and friends and minister to us through each other. You fill our hearts with a longing for you to be a home with you and you with us. And you have given us your peace. You have redeemed us. You have called us to a high calling in Christ Jesus. You have been our light in darkness, our rock of strength in adversity and temptation. This is why we continue to pray for the needs of those we know Some are with having COVID, some are unspoken. We named Donna, our pianist, as one who's still under the weather. We just pray a special touch on her. We pray for those who are traveling on these roads, and we ask for your protection. We also, Lord, your your light continues to shine in the darkness, and we're grateful for that. So may our hearts always be open to your presence. We offer ourselves to you, opening our hearts to give you room, bowing at your manger, offering ourselves to you in light of all you have done for us, and praying the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This Christmas season, we have spoken of home, not so much as a physical place, but as a climate and 
condition of community where all people feel safe to be themselves, to accept and be accepted, to love and to be loved. Generally speaking, humanity creates a home environment during the Christmas season more than any other time of year. And perhaps that is because it celebrates us opening our hearts to Christ, who comes to our world to make that home with us and between us and with God. It is that peace and goodwill that that creates within many of us a longing that Christmas, that home, can be celebrated everywhere and throughout the year. And if home is not a place or only an ancient story about what God did and in and through Christ, but a way of relating to God and each other, then living out New Year covenants are a way to hold on to home. When we begin to truly grasp and believe who God is and what he has done for us in Christ and wants to continue to do for us, the desire to enter and keep a covenant to be God's people and for him to be our God is a given. And yet we already heard what God's people got away with, got away from it in Jeremiah's day. Now John reflects back on the life and times of the eternal Son of God, telling us that even God came to us in the human flesh of Jesus and plainly enlightens us and the world as to who God is and what he wants to do for us. Choosing to become a covenant keeper still does not come automatically or easily to many people. Listen to his contemplation of the Christmas story. <clears throat> the word Christ was in the beginning. The word was with God. The word was God. He was with God in the beginning. He made all things. Nothing was made without him making it. Life began by him. His life was light for men. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness has never been able to put out the light. God sent a man named John. He came to tell what he knew about the light so that all men might believe in the light by what he said. John himself was not that light, but he was sent to talk about the light. The true light, which gives light to every person who comes into the world. He, the word, came into the world. The world was made by him, and yet the world did not know him. He came to the world that was his own, but his own people did not receive him. But there were people who did put their trust in his name. He gave to all those who received him and believed him the right and the power to become children of God. They were born into God's family by God. That is, they were not born of blood and of flesh and of man's desires, but they were born of God. Christ the Word became human and he lived among us. He saw with our, we saw with our own eyes his shining greatness. This greatness is given only to a much loved son from his father. We saw that he is full of loving kindness and truth. No one has ever seen God, but his much loved only son is beside the father and very near to his father's heart. Christ has told us plainly about God and made God known to us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So let's stand and turn our faith toward Jesus as people who believe and receive him and rely on him to walk with us as we walk with him. My faith looks up to thee, the Lamb of Calvary. Savior divine, now hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away, oh, let me from this day be holy thine, may thy rich grace 
impart strength to my fainting heart, my zeal inspire. As thou hast died for me, oh, may my love to thee pure, warm, and changeless be. tread and griefs around me spread be thou my guide bid darkness turn to day wipe sorrow's tears away nor let me ever stray from thee We sing words that may inspire us and that we may never stray away from his side, yet if the people of Jeremiah's day give us any insight into humanity, there's a gap between words that we claim and hear and the actions that, we, that fail to align with those words. And that is if the words are heard at all. And for that incongruity, there is a price to pay. We see it in commerce. Marketing experts, customer service consultants, and corporate executives all agree people do not read product manuals. And so all of us have to pay for the increased product cost because companies have to re receive return products because people could never figure out how to use them. Businesses have to provide 24-hour telephone line to answer simple questions like, why doesn't my washing machine work when the answer is usually the lid is not closed or it's unplugged? One phone tech had to calm an angry customer to not take it personally when the computer gave messages that her commands were bad or invalid. To be honest, some businesses brought some of this grief on themselves. Their manuals are so poorly written, even errantly written, so that people can't understand them. A couple years ago, I received several emails from an internet provider saying that they were doing something to their security protocols and about half the words in the email were technical mumbo jumbo that I didn't have a clue as to what they were talking about, whether it applied to me or whether I had to do anything about it. When that happens too often, people give up trying to read what they're trying to say. And then they make serious mistakes with their new products so that manufacturers now have to put all kinds of warning labels on products so that you, that you would think would go without saying. But apparently people don't have the time even to read warning labels. Some have done great damage to themselves because they weren't sure how to safely handle a hair dryer, which actually says don't, don't go to sleep with your hair dryer, you, things like that. Or curling iron, and why they shouldn't jump on a treadmill when it's moving at five miles an hour and, you know, things like that. Let's say if most people aren't going to read or heed the one warning sentence that is right there in front of them on the products, like always put your wrist strap on when you're doing of your Wii remote so you don't break your costly TV. And according to one Best Buy salesperson, when the Wii first came out, TVs were damaged all the time. They were bringing TVs left and right back into the stores. If people won't read or heed such simple, short instructions, they aren't going to trouble themselves spending much time heeding life's user manual, the Bible. The people in Jeremiah's day had the words. They knew all the stories of their people, their heritage, and their traditions. And they were retold and even dramatically relived every year to remind themselves of who they were and what they were about in the world. But they chose to live by prophet with an F instead of by the prophets with a PH. To live by might makes right and power makes popular. To do what felt good in the moment rather than what is best in the long run. To live by convenience and circumstance rather than by covenant. I wonder if those words sunk in any better than the words of the warnings. They must have plenty pretty unbelievable words to exiled refugees 
when Jeremiah came with this new text that we heard today. They were under the powerful thumb of an empire. But the real question is not what they believed when they read and heard the words of the prophet. What matters is what we believe and how we act in response to reading and hearing the word of God through Jesus. We may not understand it all right away or even completely understand everything, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't be working at it. I know a mechanic, one of the quickest and most efficient mechanics in several of the locales in which he worked because he was often the only mechanic in those dealerships who would actually take time to sit down and read the service bulletins from the factory that explained what symptoms, problems, and solutions the various car makes were having. Everybody else was clueless in the shop except for him. In a similar way, the people of Jeremiah's day needed to be reading and listening to their life manual for answers to what would make their life work like it should in any given circumstance. But what they really needed is someone who understands what it all means, who could come and show them how it is done. I don't know about you, but sometimes it's a whole lot easier than trying to read something than to have somebody just point it out step by step and get you along, if they're a good teacher. I can learn much easier and quicker that way, and it sticks with me longer. And ultimately, this is what the book of John says God did for us in Jesus. The Word of God, with God, in the beginning, before creation, in Him was life and life. He created it all, and then He came to His creation, and they didn't recognize or understand Him. I guess they hadn't read their manual well enough. But there were some who did understand and receive Jesus, and Jesus made God known to these believers, and God birthed them into his family. Jesus is the powerful word of God. Based on our non-use of most manuals, many don't have much faith in words. Maybe we never have. When Shakespeare's Prince Hamlet is asked a question about what he's reading, he responds, words, words, words implying that the words were meaningless to him. But the fact is, words do have real power. Rosencrantz, another character in Hamlet, said, in slightly modernized language, many wearing swords are afraid of writing instruments and rarely dare come near. Or the more common phrase written by Edward Bulwer-Lighton in 1839, the pen is mightier than the sword. We understand the power of words, their help and their hurt. From beginning to end, our manual, the Bible, tells us what God speaks, what he accomplishes, and lives are changed when he speaks. This is true because with God there is no real distinction between word and deed. What he spoke, he acted. What he said happened. For too many people, what they say and what they do are two different things. Sometimes the intent is there, but we fail. Some proclaim promises they have no intention of keeping. But what God says, he does. And in today's text, his word becomes flesh and lives among us. And Jesus is not just the word we sit down and read, but God's word actually takes human form and begins to walk among us to show us as a living and breathing expression of God's grace and truth, showing us most clearly what God desires for us. Jesus is the word that we watch and hear and imitate and follow. No form of instruction could possibly be more user-friendly. His word brings light to life and light into darkness. And John will go on to say that the word comes to bring us joyful and abundant living. Call the wild author Jack London voice his own yearning for authentic and abundant life over mere living when he wrote... I would rather that my spark should burn out in a brilliant blaze, a superb meteor, every atom of me in magnificent glow, rather than a sleepy and permanent planet. A proper function of a person is to live, not exist. I shall use my time. The greatest wonder of life in Christ is that unlike London's vision of life blazing through darkness but then being extinguished in Christ, we enjoy both the brilliance of a full life and the eternal flame, eternal life. 
John celebrates the fullness of life and light that is offered in Jesus. What the disciples experienced in Jesus went far beyond their old spiritual instruction manual. It was the almighty divine himself entering our physical word, world in the flesh. The creator took the form of the created to not only tell but to show us the way. The gift of the Son was withheld from no one. The King of Kings became a lowly, humble, suffering, unhailed servant so everyone could understand. But the plan was so exceptionally simple and unimaginable that even most of God's own people missed it. Some left their packages unclaimed. Some accepted the gift and carried it around, but it failed to remove the wrappings and look inside to discover the hidden splendor. You got any Christmas presents unwrapped yet? I don't see anybody nodding yes. No. And yet the gift of Christ, so many people have not yet unwrapped him and seen him for all he is worth. As the festivals end and the new year begins, will we be like Jeremiah's people who showed up for the lights and the flowers and the sacred rites and stories and traditions, but whose enduring meaning of all of those things became empty? And as soon as everything was put away, so was the excitement. They quickly let go of God's promises and their covenant commitments and wandered away from home and back into the darkness. As we enter 2022, let's resolve to be like the wise men and the disciples and the many faithful who went to great lengths to connect with the living Lord, living in the manger, living on the cross, living after the tomb, living at the right hand of God, and offer our lives and hearts in a tangible relationship with him and with each other. Not just during festivals, but we are always seeking throughout the year to gain another glimpse, a deeper glimpse, into the spiritual realities of our world, to experience more closely within our spirits the new eternal covenant relationship that was established by God through Jesus Christ. It's in this Christmas season that it seems so much of humanity comes so much closer, and that's why we sang, Charles sang for us, wish it could happen all year long in every place of the world. That's what our goal is. And one way we remember and receive and hold on to that idea of home with Christ is through his grace and promises, and it's given to us through the communion table. Christ our Lord invites all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. So let's pray. Our Father, searcher of all our hearts, you have formed us as a people and claimed us for your own. We come to the communion table to acknowledge your leadership and your grace. As we remember our covenant with you, reveal any reluctance or falsehood within us. Let your spirit impress your truth on our innermost being and receive us in mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's continue to prepare our hearts by singing twice the refrain of Take Our Bread. Kathy will play it through for us so we get a sense of the tune. prepare our hearts for communion through a prayer of confession. God, we confess that there are times that we have failed to love you with our whole heart. We do not always do your will, rebelling against you and your love for us and others. Yet you faithfully remember us when we forget you. 
You follow us even when we try to flee from you. You meet us with patience, overflowing grace and forgiveness when we return to you. Therefore, we praise you and, are, and long more, for more of you. Reveal more of yourself to us to take us beyond the confines of familiar festivals and rites and traditions. Expand our understanding of you and your mission so that we can love you more wholeheartedly, reflect your image more accurately, and faithfully communicate your grace to a hurting world. We thank you, Lord, for the ways in which you have made yourself known through prophets and kings and religious leaders and others, and ultimately through Jesus. You have opened our eyes to more of who you are, bringing more within our grasp the mystery of who you are, of what you do, and your message to us. That you are gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. That you, Lord, are light and in you there is no darkness at all. And that if we walk in the light as you are in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of your Son, Jesus, cleanses us, granting us remission of sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Spirit, telling us that we are forgiven. There will now be cues on the yellow responses for you to join in on. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth, or you had formed the earth from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity to sin's powers and made a covenant to be our sovereign God. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself our light, and our salvation. You sent a star to guide wise men to where the Christ was born. And in your signs and witnesses, you announced that the time had come when you would save your people. And indeed, in every age and throughout all the world, you have led your people from places near and far to the light of Jesus and a new covenant through him. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup and the ones that we hold in our hands. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, when he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread with his disciples in an upper room, and he gave thanks, and he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do with this in remembrance of me. Take and eat. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, and he gave it to his disciples, 
saying, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is given for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Take and drink. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us and we offer ourselves to you. Together going into the world to give ourselves for others in the strength of your spirit and in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's stand and sing about how wonderful it is to be in this covenant relationship with Jesus. Jesus, the very thought of thee, with sweetness fills the breast. I face to see, and in thy presence rest. Oh, hope of every contrite heart, O oh, joy of all the meek, to those who fall, how kind thou art, how good to Now as you go, shine his life and light in 2022 by giving yourself fully to the worthwhile work of the Lord. Be an example of how to longingly, expectantly open the doors of your heart's home for God's presence, welcoming and holding on to his arrival with the rise of each new day. Amen.